Okay, so this is 1.2 Gaussian elimination or and also Jordan Gauss elimination. Okay, so pretty self explanatory. These are just the names. This is, um, you have the zeros down here. So that's an upper triangular. We call that the U matrix. A rho echelon form is an upper triangular, but with ones in the diagonal. And a reduced row echelon form is zeros everywhere except for the diagonal. So Gaussian elimination, it basically just stops at row echelon form. So which way will we go? It's basically a personal choice. I actually personally, sometimes I do a combination. I like to have a zero there or a zero there. Okay, so let's solve using this matrices and using this process. Best advice that I didn't pick up right away as a student is that there's an algorithm that you can follow that will work 100% of the time. And if you don't follow it, you can be spinning your wheels. Let's look at an example. So we're gonna wanna augment the system. So best advice is make sure we have a one here. If you don't, do whatever it takes to get a one there. Either flip, ro flip the rows, you can do a multiple of one row to another. So you'll see me do different things to get a one there. But make the one there, which we already have. Um, and then once you have a one there, then it's just really simple. You don't have to introduce fractions to zero these two out. Even though I say one elementary step at a time, we're going to do it at the same time. To get a zero on this first one, on our second row, we use the one. So it's minus two row one plus row two to row two. So hopefully you can see that that zeroes that out. That's minus two, that's minus two, plus two is zero, and then you add it to row two. So do the same thing here. We just need to add row one and row one plus row three to row three. We can see we'll zero that out. Okay, so zero those two out. You could almost just blindly do this, but I would always double check your equation and always write your equation to, so you can communicate what you're doing especially in case you make a mistake. Now, I also want to point out we're changing row, row, row two and row three. So I can just copy row one minus four plus three. goes right there. And then we'll go to this one. Positive two plus five, seven. Okay, so now that... We've zeroed those two out. What we want to do next, if we're going to follow the algorithm carefully, is the goal is to get a one here first and then zero those out. Then we want a one there and then you'll zero these two out. Then you'll get a one here and then zero those two out. So that's the algorithm, okay? So we want a one here and then zero out the other two. Since it is a minus one, you could multiply through by a negative now or do it later. It doesn't matter. I'll go ahead and keep with my algorithm. But you, you see you don't have to strictly stick to it once you understand the process. So all I'm going to do is I want a one there. So I'm going to go minus r2 to r2, keeping the others the same. Now that I have my one, I'm gonna zero out rows one and three. So minus two plus two, we'll zero that out. The last, the second equation I need. So I personally like to fill in row two because I know it's not gonna be changed. And these are the expected changes already. So 14, Minus one. Okay, since we have a row of zeros on the bottom and I, like I said, I got my one zero on the top, I'm going to stop there and write out my equations. Just like we did in the last video, we didn't have much solving to do. We just wrote out the equations and we were able to solve them. Now we're at a point where we are probably 
able to solve them. So this is this first equation, that z, because it's 0y, second. Our leading variables don't have a coefficient in front of it. So we're going to solve for those. And both of them must also, you can see, are in terms of z. So what we call z, z is our free variable. So what we're going to do is we're going to set, just like we did the last video, z equal to our parameter. T is any real number. So our solution, again, this is three variables, x, y, and z. Here x is in terms of z, which is now t. And so we have all three of them. And again, we could do it column-wise. Pull out that t. And our constants, this is zero there because there is no constant. Okay, so again, we'll be using that throughout the course, these parameters. So it's easier to learn it now correctly. Just another example. So we will augment it just like we did before. Be very careful. Three variables are... So again, I like my one to be there. So how can I get one to be there? Well, looks like we can just swap the two rows. Now that I have my one there, I want to zero that out. Minus three plus three will be zero. Just copy. So, I mean, if I'm going to get a 1 here, I'm just going to have fractions. And then when I rewrite it as an equation, I'll have to clear my fractions. So I have a 0 there up here. And so think about if, if this were squared off, you'd have a row of zeros. We, we have enough now to change it to equations and to write our solutions. This is x1, my first row. Notice how both equations have an x2 in it, like the last problem. So basically, I want to write x1 in terms of x2. Okay, so x2 is t, that's my parameter, so x1 equals x2, which is t. And then, again, we're just pulling out the t, writing the constants. Okay, let's do another one example, a little bit different one. Okay, so let's go ahead and augment it, just like um, we've done with other problems. Okay, so I want my one up here, so I'm just going to flop these two. Okay, now that I have that there, I'm going to zero these two out. That'll do it. Minus 3 times R1 is minus 3B, and then you add it to R3. So we want this to be consistent, and if it's going to be consistent, well, we can see here this row is double this row. 5 times 2 is 10. Minus 7 times 2 so we can see this times 2. If we were to, we can zero out these two. If these are going to be all zeros, to be consistent, this has to be zero. Remember that from our last video? Because if we have all zeros over here and one over here, it's inconsistent. Because that's your augmented right there. So to be consistent, so we can see the bottom row needs to be double. So that goes for these, these two also. So if we have 2 times 
that needs to be minus 3b plus c. So we could just clean up, clean it up a little bit. Maybe isolate that c that's all by itself. So if those numbers have this relationship, if a, b, and c, then it's going to be a consistent. It will be an infinite number of solutions because both sides will equal to zero. Otherwise, it will be a no solution. Okay, let's get do some definitions here. So if we have a system that's equal to zero, then the system is homogeneous. So just to write out the system, the equations, the system of equations. So here's our system with the a and the x multiplied out. But this is our shorthand notation. Basically, it's homogeneous if they're all equal to zero. You have the vector of zeros right there. So if that's true, if we have a homogeneous system, so just to know, if we do have a homogeneous solution, every homogeneous solution is consistent. And this, this is why. I'm sorry, if we take the vector zero, and those are my x's, this is zero, this is zero, they're all zero, well, then we have zero equals zero. That's going to be a solution to every single one of them. So that's a solution to the system. And basically in shorthand notation, so we basically have plug in zero, a times zero equals zero. That's a true statement. So it's a solution. So if that's true, there's two possibilities. By the way, this is called this trivial solution. Like it's obvious, it's trivial. So the trivial solution is the only solution, is one possibility. And what's our last possibility? Either have one solution, zero, or infinite. Well, zero is not a possibility, so it would have to be infinite is another possibility, but that's it. Just those two possibilities. And that would include trivial. So if n is greater than m, meaning n is the number of unknowns, is greater than our number of equations, then we will have an infinite solutions. So basically, if you were basically to take a and square it up, you'd have a row of zeros. So anytime you have a row of zeros, then it's going to be infinite number of solutions. You notice how we had a row of zeros a couple times, and we had solutions that had parameters in it. The solutions with parameters in it is infinite because T stands for all real numbers and infinite number of solutions. Okay, one last example. So for this system, when do we have a unique solution? So do remember, this is the system. We're switching back to ax equals b, but a here will be just a 2 by 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to, to answer this, we're going to look at the augmented. I'm going to augment it b1, b2. Now, when it's numbers, it's pretty easy. Hopefully you've been catching on, and we don't need to go all the way and make it row reduce it all the way to reduce row echelon form, but we want a 1 here and then zero that out. That's how we're going to do our first two steps, and then I think after that we'll be able to answer our question. So let's just do those two steps. It gets a little because of all those variables, a little bit algebraic nightmare, but it's not that bad. So first step, again, we've been able to be creative to get a one there, but we can't anymore. We have to just divide through by a11. So we go one over a11, row one to row one. Okay, so that was the easy part. We want a zero here. Okay, I wanted to highlight that. 
So how we're gonna do it, same as way as before. That'll work. So I'll do that for you, you do the rest. Remember, we're not touching row one, so I'm just copying it. So maybe I need to make this a little bit bigger. Actually, I already know. I'm going to have to space this out. Those two times. And then we do it here. Then add that. Okay, and this is where I want more space. So what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to write these as one fraction. So, so now just rewrite it so it's a little bit more condensed. And I'm going to definitely put the positive one first. Okay, I just cleaned it up. Okay, now let's go through this. If this is zero and this is zero, it's an infinite number of solutions. And that's not what I'm asking. I'm looking for when is this going to be a unique solution. That was my question. When do we have a unique solution? Only one. So if they're both zeros, that's not my answer. If this is zero and this is one, it's no solutions. So if this is zero and this is zero it's an infinite number of solutions or if this is zero and this is anything else it's no solutions so we have a unique solution if so we have a unique solution if yeah this is non-zero non-zero. Okay, so when is that non-zero? Well, we don't care about the bottom. Bottom denominator will be non-zero. And the top would have to be non-zero. So we don't know this yet. Maybe some of you do. But A11 times A22 minus A21 that is called the determinant. So basically, if then one solution. And it's a one unique solution. Okay, that's the final thing I wanted to make a point of. We'll be seeing that throughout this course. You know, being the determinant not being zero is very helpful in a lot of cases. Okay, that's it for today. Bye.